Hello guys, Slu Jerry speaking. Welcome to JPCB as for 1000. Um, 4 and 71. Today back to Fairy Odd Gamer, episode number 78, Super Mario RPG with Shadow Flare. We had this beginning in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Now, I'm going to turn this up a little bit because I almost spoiled the episode there. And plus, um, I was making a boring joke to episode Boy Lab New York City. So, it does make a lot of sense in any way. Let's, let's continue on. Anyway. Wow. Here I gave my show for I present. Margio, okay? It's Mario Party RPG, okay? Hello, Internet viewers. I'm the Fairly Odd Gamer. Even though we started the month off with a memorable game, I thought we'd best to kind of wrap by reviewing a good Mario spinoff game. But that okay. said, let's talk about something I've never covered on this channel before RPGs. Okay. Is that you may ask? Willie P's Grandma. <laughs> What? What? Oh wow, wow. Hmm. Well, allow us to explain. RPGs, also known as role playing games, are games yeah. in which players can assume the roles of characters in a fictional setting, hmm. not of the acting type. Examples include the ever so popular Dungeons and Dragons and even the world of LARPing or a live action role player. In the later years, these RPGs will be played electronically on a computer like Wow. Wow, okay. Warcraft or Roomscape. But the ones I know of come from video games such as Pokemon and Final Fantasy. Oh yeah, lame Pokemon. Continue on. Found in Kingdom Hearts among others. Okay. And yes, I'll get to that game eventually. Okay. When it comes to video games, one of the most prolific names in RPGs is Japanese company Square Enix, formerly known okay. as Squaresoft. All, okay. all the biggest names in the genre come from them. Secret of Mana, Chrono Trigger, Dragon Quest, Nier, Kingdom Hearts, and of course, the Final Fantasy series were mm. all products of Square Enix. So it mm. really made sense that Nintendo would pick up on their success and partner on a project with them. If you watch this remix, um, Final Fantasy for you. Continue on. And not surprisingly, the project in question had to involve a plumber, a kidnapped princess, a giant Koopa, a pop of white toad smoke, and even Pinocchio. Wait, wait, Pinocchio? Hmm, okay. Not kidding about the last one. According to Nintendo Power, Gina was actually described by Square as Pinocchio. Wow. And if you think that's weird, you're in for a fun ride. This is Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. Wow. However, for this review, I have good news and bad news. Wow. The bad news is there's no possible way to review the Super NES version. Well, as of now. Wow. Wow. Okay. You should, um, do it another time. Continue on. Unless I have a Super NES Classic, but I don't have the time or money to get one. How yeah, long? however, I need to s want to save the money for it ASAP. Not in this year, but whatever. Continue on. Good news. Nintendo released an HD remastered version for the Switch simply titled Super Mario RPG. It's and good. that's the version we'll be looking at for this review. Is this game any good despite the different genre? Let's find out. Okay. Now, a lot happens in this game, so we're going to be powering through it, just for the sake of making sure this video isn't longer than all three Lord of the Rings movies combined. Yeah, I saw these in Unsure Suspect reviews. Don't ask me. Continue on. Surprisingly, neither the logos for Nintendo nor Square are shown in the remake, unlike the original. Mm. Anyway, as Princess Peach enjoys life outside the Mario house, a sunny day turns dust and cloudy as Bowser, no surprisingly, swipes away Peach, taking her to his castle. Wow. Like a gazillion of time. And of course, this begins our long and arduous journey as Mario heads straight to Bowser's castle. Huh. That's actually wow. kind of refreshing. This could actually be the shortest RPG ever. You move Mario with a control stick in an isometric view, which I'm mostly not a big fan of, and running oh. into an enemy quickly transitions you to that fighting style that Square is best known for. Each character is equipped with a regular attack with the A button, I and we'll discuss Slayer with the X button, whatever the mm. other option is with the B button, and your special abilities at the cost of flowers. Oh, I'm sorry. Flower points with the Y button. Okay. If you press A again quick enough, 
then you can perform a tine attack, therefore inflicting more damage. And whenever an enemy attacks you, then you can defend yourself by pressing A. But with frame-perfect timing, then you can take no damage at all with enemy attacks. Wow. You can't block every attack, but it does come in handy. Also, okay. in battling enemies, you can even score some bonuses that could result in either refilling your health, increasing your stats, or allowing you to attack a second time with a sad character. Okay. After defeating every enemy, you then reward with experience ports to help level up your party and coins, if any. After wow. fighting off some Koopas, Mario makes his way to Bowser's throne room, where the big bad Koopa King himself has Peach hanging from the ceiling. Mario and Bowser proceed to battle atop the two chandeliers. Oh, I'm sorry, chandeliers. Chandeliers, not... okay, makes sense. Bowser, but instead attack the chain chomp holding the chandelier. After enough hits, the chomp lets go and Bowser falls. Wow. 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 Okay, not like that, but Mario defeats Bowser and saves Peach again. And so, once again, the day is saved, all thanks to... A giant sword? What's that doing here? That, disembodied Powerpuff Girls narrator voice, is Exor, second in command wow. to the actual antagonist of this adventure, Smithy. Yeah, it was voiced by, um, Zero Knight, Baron Noise, um, Seth. Watch us, um, Seth, Spio, for T1. Malin? No. Aw, he'd make a nice home director. So Mario wow. gets flown to his one bedroom house. Where does Luigi sleep? Probably in his mansion somewhere. And Toad finds him hanging on a clothing hook. Mario, oh. what are you doing? Oh, you know, just hanging around. <laughs> wow. By the way, the remake allows the game to save automatically, whereas in the original Super Nintendo version, you have to save via these save blocks. But even if I had the original version, I would still save via save blocks. So after Toad's lesson, Mario makes his way back to Bowser's Keep to find that it's been completely taken over by the Smithy Gang. Wow. Okay, I take back my source RPG ever statement. We're in for a ride here, folks. Be very afraid. Anyway, wow. when any re to the castle, Mario heads back home where Toad tells him to inform the Chancellor of the Mushroom Kingdom on what's been happening lately. By the way, this game features a map, while well, more to the likes of Donkey Kong Country, but also acts the same as Super Mario Bros. 3 and both Super Mario World games. Wow. There's also item boxes in the form of chests that contain coins or items like mushrooms, syrup, or even a star man. I am invincible! Wow. Not only can you defeat enemies by touching them like before, but you can also get experience from it. The more experience you get, the quicker you get to leveling up. And speaking okay. of which, leveling up a character increases his or her stat points. But you can also select the bonus whether it's enhancing your physical attacks, increasing your max health points or HP, mm -hmm. or enhancing your magic ability or your special abilities as previously mentioned. This is pretty much how you'll be playing the entire game. Wow. It sounds complicated, but compared to other RPGs at the time, like Final Fantasy VI for example, this is actually really simple. Wow. It's a good entry point for newcomers to the genre in all honesty. Eventually, Mario makes it to the Mushroom Kingdom. It's here where he first encountered two key locations found in most of these worlds. First, that's the inn, allowing Mario to either stay in one of the rooms for no Wait. reason, or to help- Wait, what is her name again? Hang on. Eventually, Mario makes it to the Mushroom Kingdom. It's here where he first encountered two key locations found in most of these worlds. First, that's the inn, allowing- First is the inn, eh, close caption, hang on. First, there's an N. Okay, continue on. Okay. They either stay in one of the rooms for no reason, or to help save the game. And okay. finally, we have the shops. With the coins collected, you can use them to purchase extra character abilities and even items to help you during your adventure, like yeah. mushrooms for healing, honey syrup for replenishing your flower points, cleansing juice that helps you cleanse your team during battle, and finally, there's pick me ups that lets you revive a fallen ally. If you want this to be easier, then I suggest stocking as many pick me ups as possible, because yeah. trust us, you will need them. So mm. Mario heads over to Peach's castle to find the chancellor when suddenly... Do wow. I dare know what it is? Use your imagination. So it's a boy difference. Do you want? Chancellor. Do it. No, not that one. And Mario explains the situation via shapeshifting into other characters? What the heck? However, it's here where he meets Mallow after being robbed by a small dinosaur. Oh, and he can't wow. cry or a giant storm comes in. Okay, is this Mallow or Princess Elise? Actually, well, he's more of a water god that resembles a puff of smoke. Well, well, according to him, he's a frog. Then how come he can't jump? It kind of reminds me of Robin from the Muppets, a frog, or rather a prince turned frog, that can't swim. Don't wow. Worry, we'll get there. That purple fellow, Croco, stole his grandfather's lucky coin, and clearly he needs help getting it back. And well, as a result, Mallow becomes the first ally to join Mario in his quest. I would make a book of the game reference for my pods on the Holy Grail, but then we miss more of the important stuff. 
Wow. Whenever Mal is in battle, it's best to use him for offensive spells like Thunderbolt and eventually Shocker and Snowy. <sighs> Think of him as your star mate throughout the early stages of the game. So a toe caught sight of Krakow zooming past him. Why didn't he stop him? Because the toe left his bazooka at home. How else would I kill the princess? And so gives wow. my own map. However, by choosing the map in the pause menu, you can actually fast travel to any previously visited area. So Mario and Mallow chase Krakow through Bandit's Way, which is littered with platforms and spinning flowers that make you jump really high. Eventually, wow. you catch Krakow and battle him, taking back Mallow's grandpa's coin. Yeah. Also, with his weakness of fire, I just turned Krakow into Spyro. And then Mario wow. steals Krakow's wallet. Are you sure that's his wallet? Just because the game said that Krakow left a wallet doesn't necessarily mean it's his wallet. Fair point. He has on back to the Mushroom Kingdom, and everything changed when the Shy Guy Nation attack. Being free-spirited as young schoolgirls bouncing on pogo sticks, the ultimate free-spirited device of all time. Dear my whimsy! But in actuality, these Shy Guys are led by the first boss of the game, Clay Morton, a small devil riding a pogo sword. The wow. boss fight really isn't that hard, even with the pogo riding Shy Guy bodyguards. Defeating him earns you coins of plenty, as Mario finds the first of only seven Chaos Emeralds, I mean stars. Actually, well, that's not a bad idea for my next new game. If it's not Sonic Adventure 3, I'm not interested. Well, After rescuing the Chancellor, Mallow suggests that the party head to Tadpole Pond to visit his grandfather, because he knows everything! Well, Before doing so, they ask me a quick stop at the Karo Sewers, which leads to Tadpole Pond. But beware of the Balone, a four-horned <laughs> monster with literally four eyes that likes to eat everything. Depending, it pushes the game via waterfalls of the Minas River, as they finally <laughs> arrive at Tadpole Pond. Wow. On the trail of tadpoles, we then meet Mal's grandfather, the Frog Sage, or as he's known in the original version, Frog Fuchsius. Not <laughs> only did the shockwave fly off Mario, Peach, and Bowser in different areas, but we also find out that Milo is not a tadpole. Wow. And apparently was given- Wow. Just wow. Okay. Moses treatment at birth, as well as Superman and Tarzan. But the point is that Mario now also has to help find Mal's real family. The Frog Sage tells him to go to Rose Town, and that's where they head off to next. Right after Bowser's pep talk with his minions of Goombas, Shell Koopas, and Magic Koopas. In Rose Town, FALLING ARROWS! Okay, they're not well, lethal, but I can still immobilize well, those upon impact. After arriving in Rose Town, Mario finds a toad kid named Gaz playing with his Mario toys and a Pinocchio-like doll called Gino. That well, night, a star comes down from the sky and takes control of Gino, who wanders off. Mario and Mallow. Is that a zombie looking Pinocchio difference? I don't know. Yeah. Well, Gino into the forest maze, and that's where they find the one behind the arrow attack, Bowyer, an arrow shooting monster who speaks in Yoda ease. Happy I am! Wow. Wow. I guess Bowyer is alright. That is until he has the lock button commands later in the fight. Meaning, if an arrow hits a button, then it'll be locked for a certain amount wow. of turns. Thankfully, Gino joins. An arrow hits a button, then it'll be locked for a certain amount of turns. Thankfully, Gino joins you for this battle, and if you're playing the remake at least, grants you access to triple moves, where all three party members team up to launch a devastating blow. It's a big help when dealing with bosses, trust me. Uh -huh. On top of that, Gino is a powerhouse. With proper timing, his specials can do massive damage. And in some cases, he can increase a character's attack and defense via Gino boost. Yes, he uses for physical characters like Mario and Bowser, but we'll get to him later. Anyway, they collect the second star, and Gino now joins the team. Oh, and Pipefall takes you to Yoster Isle, or the rap version of Yoshi's Island. So well. now we know that our mission is to find all seven stars and fix the star road, thanks to Gino. The remainder of the adventure pretty much revolves around that. A lot happens, more than we could reasonably cover in a timely manner, but here are some of the highlights. A trip to Moleville leads Mario to an underground cave with bombs, Croco again, Punchinello who never punches, and a minecart sequence turned roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Then a trip to Booster Pass leads Mario to Booster Tower where he finds Bowser, who then joins the party. I want to briefly point out that at this point, you can switch party members during battle, with the exception of Mario. Wow. Plus, Bowser has the highest attack stats, giving him pure strength. So it's best to use him for strong physical attacks, as well as help from his minions if needed. Wow. As well as Princess Peach. Big shock. Captured by this Wario-looking dude named Booster, and Mario and Bowser team up to save her. After Bowser bursts the door open via shell, Mario eventually finds Booster, rehearsing for his wedding with Peach, predating Bowser by goodness knows how many years. Shocked at the sight of Mario, it results in a long hill chase while avoiding barrels and incoming snifters all the way to Marymore. Sneaking to the church via the back door, like Bowser's castle in Super Mario World, both Bowser and Mario literally crash the so-called wedding. Which results in...
Whoa, evil! Evil! Continue on. And don't worry, another video game character will experience a complete role reversal ten years later. Please. Wow. Just wow. TMI! Continue on. Mention it. Which then leads Thank to you. a boss fight. Thank you, giant. Sonic. Anyway. Please tell me that Glaus is responsible for this. I'd prefer it if it was Pinkie Pie. I'm so nervous well, about that! It well. returns to the Mushroom Kingdom as Peach becomes the final member of the party. Hooray! Even though Peach is more of a maid, it's best to use Peach for healing purposes, whether it's an individual member or the entire party in general. Back at Tadpole Pond, the frog snakes caught sight of another star in Star Hill, fittingly enough, which is where they head to next. And look at that! There's a star just sitting there. He's right! <laughs> Again, I guess you can say we found that. Whoa! Watch it there, gamer. Ugh. I guess you can say we found that four star piece. Wow. <sighs> that was close. Sucks having to be family friendly, doesn't it? No. After that, the party makes their way to Seaside Town, where they find oh. out there's a star in a sunken pirate ship. After mm -hmm. finding a ton of fish, ghosts, and a giant blooper, they find mm -hmm. themselves face to face with a ruthless shark pirate. Jonathan Jones. He's out. Let's call it Johnny. After beating Wait, Johnny. Johnny Gilbert. Difference from Jeopardy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mario in the game, the star, as a badge of honor. But before <laughs> moving on, one of the elders holds a shop filled with any kind of bomb imaginable. And by the way, this is the only time you're given access to this shop. Why? Because the elders actually spent the game member Spiritovich disguised as a toad. While Spinovich does take the star from Mario, he then gets stopped by Johnny, resulting in a boss fight against Spinovich with lightning and cloning itself. And of course, defeating Spinovich <laughs> earns you the star back. Well. However, the real elder tells Mario that he found a star in Monster Town at the far side of Land's Inn. Yeah. Next destination. Wait a minute. Monster Town? Is the ruler of the town a giant whale that one time swallowed Pinocchio's father? Actually, it's where we well. find Belomi Temple. Onto this weird cat looking thing named Belomi, whom, of course, we have to fight for a well. second time. But a climb of paratroopers takes Mario to Bean Valley, where a flying shy guy wires a three-headed product plant literally named Spider. Flying up. Kind of reminds me of the whole, um, the chicken from Jimmy New John Boy, Boy Genius. Anyway, to you on. A pipe that leads to a giant beanstalk to the clouds that lead to multiple beanstalks for Mario to climb. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like flying games in an isometric view. Moving around Mario in this view can get disorienting. Yeah, I know, Sonic 3 Blast did the same thing around the same time. I personally thought that game was okay, but having to jump from one being stuck to another while trying to avoid any battle? That's an entirely different story. If you yeah. did manage... You know, I was the same thing when... Bad Ben, when Poi Explorer Edition came out on the Switch, I was afraid of heights, you know? That was the same feeling, and I don't like it at all, so... That was the same feeling I was in with you. Continue on. Create this game's platforming without pulling your hair out. You arrive in Nimbus Land, where... Valentina's a spoiled brat with an overweight dodo bird as a pet. Yeah, through some... Wow. It was a huge crawl, like... Whoa! Continue on. First level manipulation tactics, Valentina has seized control of Nimbus Land's throne. Allow me to describe these two in one sort of clip. Liar! It's not wow. telling me the sculptor Garrow, but we find out that Mallow is actually the prince of Nimbus Land, and based on his childhood, wouldn't that make him a frog prince? Wow. Oh, come on, if I didn't make that joke, I'm sure a hundred people would. Disguised as a golden statue, Mario enters the castle as his gold disguise wears off. But hey, at least Birdo makes a return from Super Mario Bros. 2 USA. Also, I defeated Dodo via Starman. <laughs> Wow. Then they found out that Dodo comes back in battle with Valentina, who then reveals how much of a fake she really is. But before fighting Valentina, Dodo swoops Bowser away in a one-on-one -on -one battle until Dodo gives up. Wow. Meanwhile, the others fight Valentina as Bowser and Dodo return for a giant three-on-two battle. Until Valentina and Dodo run away like the cowards they are. Oh, and she wow. drops the key that lands on Mallow's head. Resulting in Mallow finally reuniting with his parents. And before I move on, it's at this point where I managed to get, in my opinion, the best weapon and armor mm. in the entire game, the Lazy Shell. After getting the seed and well. fertilizer, take them both to the garden at Rose Town as you plant a beanstalk that leads you to retrieving said items. My suggestion would be to give the Lazy Shell weapon to Mario and the Lazy Shell armor to Peach, making her more of a tank. 
After returning well, to Nimbus Land to its rightful owners, Mario and the gang make their way. Wait, one, one, one playback. Kind of reminds me of Jack and the Beanstalk. T1. More of a tank. After returning Nimbus Land to its rightful owners, Mario and the gang make their way to the hot springs where you can replenish your health as he literally jumps off a cloud. And then they fall down into Barrel Volcano, where they encounter the wow. Zalmar Dragon, a massive, fiery beast. Shot boy, why we go with difference, ladies and gentlemen? And this thing right here is a dinosaur difference. Get to one. Or the wings, anyway. Two phases, the second of which is far more terrifying than the first. Wow. At last, Mario retreats star number six. Only to be snatched away by a knockoff Power Ranger group called the Axum Rangers. Wait, 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 what did you say? Hold on. Star number six. Only to be snatched away by a knockoff Power. Ew. <laughs> this is such a joke. Okay, whatever. Get the one. Group called the Axum Rangers. Go, go, Axum Rangers. Wow. I think. Boy, um, the the Axum Rangers go. Ah, you man, you go! Something like that. Power just down from the difference. Continue on. But stole Proto Man's shades. They try to escape via their ship, the Blade, but are then interrupted by the mm -hmm. Mario Party and eventually defeat said Axum Rangers, resulting in the Blade following with explosions and the retrieval of the second to the last star. So, um. where could the last star piece be? Why in Bowser's Keep, of course, as they make their way via Cloud Bus. With that, um. it's time for the game to head back to Bowser's Keep and get that final star. Wow. The fast Shadow. Because the location. Oh, wait, wait, what is that? Just keep it. Get that final star. That's a fast shadow. Because the location, it's best to have Bowser with you whenever a battle. Because any of us. Oh, wait, it just. Oh my God, this. Um, whatever this thing is, is fat. Seriously, continue on. <laughs> it's simply run away. They wouldn't want to fight out their own leader, right? Oh, and remember Croco? Apparently, he can now help you by giving you items necessary for your. I mean, what what do you, what did this guy eat? Anyway, some sugar or something? Anyway. Because and oh, and remember Croco? Apparently, he can now help you by giving you items necessary for your journey's end. Then six doors lay before you: two are platforming, two are battles, and two are puzzle solving. Completing four of them allows the game to fight Wizakoopa under Smithy's control, who is then defeated by our heroes. As a result, Wizard Koopa can allow you to get as many coins as you want, as well as any extra items needed via Croco. After that, the gang ends up back in Bowser's throne room, where they fight another of Smithy's higher-ups, Boomer, in the exact Boomer. same setup that Mario fought Bowser in at the beginning. Once he's down, you fight against Exor. In case you forgot, it's a giant sword that stabbed Bowser's castle in the beginning of the game. Exor's only protection are his eyes and mouth, making it a very difficult fight. Yeah, Croco eyes and mouth, like... Ears and mouth and nose. So like that. Continue on. Enough. I actually managed to defeat Exor with Gino's Whirl ability, inflicting 9,999 damage on Exor. And wow. guess what? It's not over yet. It turns out that Exor also acts as a portal to Smithy's world. After defeating a clock called Countdown, Domino and Cloak with a giant snake, they enter the heart of Smithy's world, a factory. Hmm. And this factory will not go easy on you. What lies ahead is a veritable gauntlet of not only some of the most powerful enemies in the game, but a ton of bosses, all of whom are big wigs in Smithy's weapon building operation here. Just keep your chin up and use your items and seals mm -hmm. wisely, and you'll make it. Eventually, yeah. the run to the final boss of the game, Smithy. And yes, it's as long and difficult as any other RPG final boss, with two stages. While the first stage has you defeat Smithy with metallic versions of enemies and a smolter, it's the second and final stage of the boss fight that makes it even more difficult than it needs to be. In his true form, he can use his hammer to mold his head into a tank, a wizard, a Wait, wait a tank? Come on, you have the whole... For those about the rock, we salute you, think. Continue on. In his true form, he can use his hammer to mold his head into a tank, a wizard, a chest, and even a coffin. For this well, point, I prefer having Peach and Gino alongside Mario by means of stat boost as well as healing. Also, it's best to use every offensive item imaginable, like bombs and whatnot, in addition to your physical attacks and magic spells. Eventually, well, after around 40 minutes, Smithy is finally defeated as Mario and his gang retrieve the final star and therefore fix the star road. Well, With Gino's quest completed, he unfortunately turns back into a lifeless wooden doll. Goodbye, well, Gino. You may never appear in a game after this. Wow. No, I'm not counting that. But we will hold you close in our hearts like a treasured friend. 
and everything is back to normal. And look, Booster gets to marry Valentina with Dodo as the priest. They deserve each other. The game ends with a giant parade, and everyone lives happily ever after. The end. Well, I feel like we've forgotten something. It's probably, um, let's say, for example, man, um, SML, um, videos. Some more Logan difference. See you on. What? Is this an RPG? They used to take forever anyway. Ain't that the truth. RPGs really are not my thing. Actually, you do bring up a good point. There actually is something we forgot to mention. The most gameplay. Wow. It isn't to getting a stay voucher. Making your way back to Monster Town results in a hidden boss fight called... Close courtesy of, um... Boss fight database. Okay, it's a one. If you're good enough, you can actually beat him in three turns. And while we're at it, why don't we talk about the game's music? Super Mario RPG's soundtrack was composed by Yoko Shimomura, who has also done music for Final Fantasy XV as well as the Kingdom Hearts series. Voyage of Remix, again, Final Fantasy Big Team for you. Continue on. Her compositions are some of the best tunes in Mario history, not only managing to capture the atmosphere of each area perfectly, but also managing to be catchy as all get out. Seriously, she's a genius. I think that just about covers everything. What are your final thoughts, gamer? I have to say that for an RPG game, it's actually not that bad. Mm. I'm not much of an RPG fan, knowing that most of them take longer than necessary. However, well, to me, I'm a PC gamer in person, so just what I let you know about it. Just m more about it, per se, when we react in videos like this. Continue on. Just my regret. Continue on. Anyway. Because this game, it's actually pretty short in terms of length. Well, it did take me a total of 15 hours to beat this game. You can still beat it in a whole weekend if you're dedicated enough. Wow. Graphically, it's about what I expect in an HD remaster. Enhanced 3D graphics with incredible model quality. And yeah, I know the original version of the Super NES was more of an experimentation, so I'll give it some slack. When it comes to the gameplay, it's also what I expect for a turn-based RPG. Yeah. The character does his job pretty well, and I think it's a good way to get new covers into RPGs, uh -huh. or rather the basics of it. But again, I'm not that keen with the isometric view, especially for a game that now has full 3D qualities and capabilities like... It's kind of like 3D, like for example, Sharp Boy, like Spy Kids 3D, which I saw in Fears, the first one I saw in Fears, and other things like that. It makes more sense, gamer. Yeah. Yeah, I try to do something better, you know? T1. Rotate the camera if need be. The music is great to listen to, and my overall experience with it, it was tedious at first, but at least I had some fun with it. Overall, Super Mario RPG is a fantastic game, and I recommend it to anyone that wants to get into RPG gaming. Even mm. though it's not available for virtual console anymore, and getting a Super NES Classic can have a hefty price tag, I think the remake is a good way to help suffice that. Mm. Give it a try when you get a chance. Even as someone who really isn't that into RPGs, I can't deny, Super Mario RPG is one of the best games of its kind. The writing, Jeff. story, and presentation are packed to the brim with charm, which I believe can win over even the most cynical RPG hater. The combat system puts it a league above other RPGs, too, in my opinion. Square found a way to make turn-based content more engaging for Mario fans who probably wanted a little more action, and it paid off wonderfully. So wonderfully that pretty much every Mario RPG going forward would look to this game for inspiration. I recommend the Switch version over the original because of the quality of life enhancements, but I think you'll have a good time regardless which version you pick. It's yeah. not perfect, and I don't know if I ever see myself playing it again, but there's a reason generations of Mario fans remember this game mm -hmm. so fondly, and I'm happy that a whole new generation gets to as well. Yeah. You know, after playing a game like this, I feel like I need some rest. Um, For RPGs, that is. Um, I also want to go back to the mainstream Mario games that he is best known for. So next time we meet, we're going to look at some of the 3D Mario mainstream games. I'm the Fairly Bad Gamer, and I wish you all good luck for the rest of your day or night, wherever you are. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Hey, everyone. It's Sonic again, reminding you to support the channel on Patreon. In addition to exclusive access to Discord and extra bonus features, but your name will also be seen right next to me, okay. like Luke Jeffers. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Sonic. Much appreciate that. Video supporting the channel and possibly giving me an idea for a future game. So that was basically, wow, 
Fire Mario RPG um, on software with um, this very odd game episode number 38. What I think about this episode, I've, in my experience like this, very amazing. So far this episode was a success. That was episode of LGBT episode 1,471. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned. Next is going to be LGBT episode 1,472, which will be about the uh, one, yep, either Mr. K1 or a um, or a racing game. I don't know from the Terminator. We'll see what happens. Till next time, so Jarvis, Bob, for baby, you watch the rest of the soon. Stay out. See ya. Thank you.